I want to get this started quickly here, but before we do get started, um, if you have any questions or observations you'd like to share during this program, you can text your questions to the number 562-286-1838. Again, that's 562-286-1838. And we'll have, we have staff standing by ready to take questions via text and also to relay some of those questions to me so I can answer them here on the live stream. Uh, if you want to give your name, you can also have your name said on the live stream too. I'm happy to do, we're happy to do that, so let us know. And um, what else? Oh, yes. Also, if you are not watching this live, you can also ask us questions later by emailing us at live at lbaop.org. We uh, check that regularly, so we're happy to answer questions that you email us through that. But if you want to get your questions answered live here on the program, text again to 562-286-1838. Remember, standard texting rates and data rates may apply. All right, let's go meet our squid. So as I mentioned, the squid that we are dissecting today is going to be the same kind of squid that you may have eaten. Here they come. Here they come. I've got two of them, which we'll get to in a little bit. The same kind of squid that you would encounter um, if you were, say, wanting to make calamari. And this is an extreme close-up here. I'm going to move things over here. All right. So, uh, take a look at this squid. Make some observations. You can see this is actually a pretty large specimen of this squid species. Uh, this squid really, this is about as big as I ever see them get. They maybe get a little bit larger than this sometimes. But the ones we, this would be on the large end of the ones we dissect. So you can see if I put my hand there, he's about the size. I'm wearing a large glove, so I have a fairly big hand, but not a huge hand. He's about, about the same length. And let's make some observations about the exterior of this squid. We're looking right now at the dorsal side of the squid. That is to say the top at the back, I guess you could say, of the squid. Um, so one thing you'll notice, you'll notice there are first off some fins back here. Part of, how the squid, part of the squid's uh, method of movement there. We'll talk about how those work in a minute. Let me see if I can get a better angle on the light here. Oh, that's better. So... You can see these fins up here. You can also see sticking out the other end here. We've got some arms. How many arms does a squid have, I wonder? Does anyone uh, know the answer to this one? You probably know that octopus, which are a cousin of the squid, have eight arms. That's what they're named after, after all. But how many arms does a squid have? Let's do, let's do a little count here real quick. So we've got one, two, let's see here, three, four, five, six... And then seven, there was two in there, six, seven, and eight. So that's eight arms. But you'll notice I'm skipping something here. There's these two other long things coming off to the side. These are the extra appendages that squid and also cuttlefish have that octopus lack. These are called, these are called tentacles. Um, people oftentimes use the terms arms and tentacles interchangeably when they're talking about these animals. But technically speaking, the arms and the tentacles are two different structures. The arms, you'll notice have suction cups pretty much along the entire structure, all the way from the base to the very tip, or almost the very tip, whereas the tentacles are these more thin tube-like structures that only have suction cups on this kind of blade at the end of them. So these both have kind of different purposes, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and actually, we can do that by watching a video of a cuttlefish eating. Let's see if we can bring... Do we have that video? Let's check this out. So this is a relative of the squid, the cuttlefish, that also has eight arms and two tentacles. Watch how this guy eats. They send out those two tentacles almost like, sort of like, like, uh, like, sort of like spears. They sort of dart out like that, pull their food item in, and then they grab onto it with the arms to manipulate it while they're eating it. So, I'm going to get out of the way here. Boom, there we go. It happens real fast, you'll notice. So that's the difference between these two types of appendages. The tentacles are more for reaching out and grabbing stuff, and then the arms are for manipulating and holding it once it gets in closer to the mouth. And once again, if you have questions during this program, by all means, text them in to me at 562-286-1838. I'm happy to take any questions you get. And uh, let's see here. Oh, and I want to say hi to the uh, Tremper uh, kids and family uh, who are apparently watching live. Hello. Nice to uh, have you with us. So, the, and here's a nice diagram again of that difference between the arms and tentacles. But there's another thing you might have noticed. Let's watch that video one more time. We've talked about how the arms and tentacles work. There's another really cool thing happening in this video, which you can see happening, boom, right there. What happened when that cuttlefish grabbed that little ghost shrimp, or whatever that is there, or this poor little crab? He's, he's so, this poor guy. I'm sorry, crab. You're not long for this world. Such is life for a crab. All right, so this cuttlefish comes along, and what happened when it grabbed onto its food did you notice any changes? 
the cuttlefish got way darker in its coloration for a moment and then went back to being pale again. The cuttlefish was, what the cuttlefish was doing there was demonstrating its ability to change color using very specialized skin cells that you find in most of the cephalopods. Octopus have them, cuttlefish have them, squid have them. They're called chromatophores. The skin of, an, of a cephalopod, and that's the family, by the way, that squid and octopus and cuttlefish belong to, um, are covered in these weird little cells that actually contain individual color packets. If, you, if I zoom in on my squid a little bit, you see all these little dots? Those are some of its chromatophores. And these can actually be stimulated to kind of, or basically broken up to open even after the animal has died. If I rub here, you notice how that spot I rubbed, oh, this worked real well, got much browner. That's because I'm breaking open these chromatophores. When the animal is alive, these chromatophores contain different color packets that can open and close to reveal different colorations, as you can see happening when they're stimulated under a microscope here. And this allows a squid or an octopus or a cuttlefish to color change almost instantaneously, actually, you know, from our from our perspective, pretty much instantaneously, to camouflage themselves and also to communicate. Uh, that communication might be to communicate its mood, to communicate a threat display, to perhaps entice a potential mate. And it varies wildly depending on the different kinds of cephalopods you're talking about. In the squid, these color changes are mostly for kind of camouflaging in the middle of the water column and also, or at least in this kind of squid, and then also for some basic communication that happens during mating, which some of which we'll see uh, later on. But now we've almost looked at some of the outside stuff on our squid. I just want to give a broad rundown of the basic parts of its anatomy real quick before we start the main dissection. So I've, you've heard me say the word cephalopod quite a few times. Well, what happened to my color temperature? It got all yellow all of a sudden. All right, so you've heard me say the word color. You've heard me say the word cephalopod quite a few times. That family, the cephalopods, that contains again squid and octopus and cuttlefish, the name basically just means head, foot. Cephalo, head, pod, foot. And the reason for this is because if you look at the members of this family, their head, which is right here, is basically attached to their feet. Now, I know we call them arms, but, you know, we could also have called them feet. What we decided to call them was kind of arbitrary. Just that's what scientists decided on. And so it's kind of like the legs of this animal are connected to its face. So it's a cephalopod. It's a head-footed animal. Uh, now, beyond the head, which is right here, there's another very large part of this animal's body. This part's called the mantle. Now, this part is more like a torso. If you think about your torso and the things that you have inside your torso, like your lungs, you know, this area of your body here, like your lungs, your heart, your stomach, your, all, your, all your other digestive organs, all that stuff, that's similar to the kind of selection of functions that are going to be served inside this part of the animal's body. And this is primarily the part that we're going to be opening up. We'll also be looking throughout the dissection at the head a little bit. Um, but we're going to mostly be looking at the stuff that we find inside the mantle. So to begin our dissection, I want to look at one more thing, actually, before we go inside this, this squid. You see the, uh, the eyes and stuff there. I'll talk about the mouth, which is between the arms here, in a little bit. Um, and, oh, I'm starting to get some questions. So Miles asked, how fast can squid swim? So that's tough to say because different squid obviously can move at different speeds. But something like 20 to 25 miles an hour is probably accurate for some of the really high speeds. Squid are reasonably fast, but they're not super fast. They're particularly quick, particularly quick though, over really short distances. Um, and I got another question, it looks like, from Miles maybe as well. What's the difference between cuttlefish and squid? Basically, squid tend to be more midwater dwellers. They tend to spend a lot of time swimming around in the water, whereas cuttlefish tend to be more near the bottom. Cuttlefish also have a hard plate on the inside called a cuddle bone. It's very different from what you'd find inside of a squid. And then while squid have a kind of a body that's all just kind of, and I'm being very basic here. Uh, when squid, although a squid's body, when you look at it, kind of is just, you know, arms come out this way, mantle's back here. With the cuttlefish, it's like you got the mantle, and then the arms kind of hang down like that. So there's a little bit more of a right angle. You can see kind of what I mean here. And this is an easy way to, to tell the difference. If you see, it's got this kind of a shape where the head, where the arm's kind of hanging down off the front of the head, then you're probably looking at a cuttlefish. Whereas if you see that that, that head kind of sticks straight out from the mantle and the arms proceed straight forward, you're probably looking at a squid. And anyway, where was I? Oh, and I got some more questions. What are the dots in the squid's body? Those again are the chromatophores that allow the squid to change color. And ooh, our tentacles 
the same between octopus and squid? Kelly and Naya asked this question. Octopus don't actually have tentacles. Octopus have only got the eight arms. So this is one of the easiest ways to know whether you're looking at an octopus or a squid or a cuttlefish. If it's got eight arms and that's it, then you're looking at an octopus. If it's got eight arms and two tentacles, then it's either a squid or a cuttlefish. Now, let's return to our squid. So I've now turned the squid over onto its back. And one last thing, before I open this squid up, when we do these dissections, we always want to look before we begin for the siphon of our squid. The siphon is this little tube you might see me squeezing here. This siphon is the main thing that allows the squid to move through the water with such speed. It's basically a little jet that the, uh, that the squid has attached to its body. In order for a squid to move quickly through the water, they don't wave around their tentacles or flap their fins really, though some squid flap their fins a little bit. Mostly, they propel themselves using the siphon. They inhale water into their mantle, I'm sorry, I'm getting in the way of my illustration here. And then they shoot it out through the siphon. So it works just like a jet. And this allows them to move through the water really, really quickly and really and be very, very maneuverable. And oh, another question, how often do they eat? We feed our squid at the aquarium here. When we do have squid, we feed them basically every day. But I don't know how often the average squid eats in nature. Actually, I'm not, that, I, you know, now that I think about it, I'm not a big, I'm not a big expert on squid metabolism. But I'm going to go out and make a, make a guess here that it's probably pretty frequently, just about as much as they can, because they have pretty short lifespans. But I bet my friends are going to have an answer for me in a couple minutes. Now, let's proceed to our dissection. So, to do this dissection, it's pretty simple. It's one of the simplest dissections you can do. We're more or less just going to make one big cut and then a couple of smaller ones later on. So... We're going to begin by opening up the mantle. I'm going to start right above the siphon here. Again, that's that jet that I can, I've got right here but on my scissors there. Start right above the siphon, and I'm going to put my scissors in. I'm going to lift as I cut. It's always important to do when you're doing any sort of dissection because you don't want to cut up the organs inside. So when you're doing that first incision to open up the skin, you just want to kind of lift as you do it, and that way you won't cut up the stuff you want to look at. And then I'm just going to fold this off to the side. Voila! Uh, this is already much better than my squid last week. My squid last week had a broken ink sac. So when I opened it up, it was all brown and blue. There was all this goop everywhere, and it looked all gross right away. This one looks a little bit better. Though still not the most appetizing thing you've ever looked at in your life, right? Because we're looking at digestive organs and stuff here, which are things that people generally uh, don't find too appealing. Um, but let's look, at see, look and see what we've got in here. So first off, we might want to answer a question that's important for any animal under the water. How did this animal get oxygen? All animals need oxygen, right, in order to, in order to survive. And we have to, we have to have it in our blood. But some, but some animals, such as ourselves, use lungs to get oxygen out of the air. And then other animals who live under the water use gills to get oxygen, basically what we call dissolved oxygen, tiny little oxygen bubbles, out of the water for themselves. Now, if we look at this squid, you might be surprised because squid are very different from fish, right? They're squid are an invertebrate. They're not a fish, not a fish at all. But just like fish, they do have gills. And gills are something we find in almost every kind of animal that you, that you find under the ocean, uh, that, at least those that move around, or those that have bodies complex enough that they can't just sort of absorb oxygen through their skin. But anyway, to return to the squid here. So if you look at this, you see these two kind of little flaps I've dangled out? Those are the actual gills of this squid. That is, yeah, and that, there we go. There, that's kind of interesting looking, huh? Different color than usual. So, you can see I've laid out some here, but some on the other side. When the, when the squid moves through the water, it's pulling water into its mantle to jet around using the siphon. That water, and this is what they look like when they're floating, by the way. You see, they almost look like a feather. That's all sorts of teeny little blood vessels that'll allow as much of the squids, of the surface of the gills to be exposed as possible so that as much oxygen can be, exposed, can be drawn out of the water as possible. Um, as the squid swims through the water, it inhales water into its mantle, right? And then it also, as it's moving around, ooh, I got the answer to that question, cool. As it's moving around, also breathes. So if you're a cephalopod, moving and breathing are basically the same motion. You get to do both at once. Now I just got an answer to this, uh, to this question about how much squid eat. Some squid, get this, eat up to 30% of their body weight each day as adults. So just as I was saying, they eat 
I, I suspected they ate a lot. What do you know? They don't have very long lifespan, so it kind of makes sense, right? If you're trying to, these animals have basically a year-long life, at least in this species, and they're trying to reach that reproductive maturity as quickly as they can, so it makes sense that they eat a lot. But 30% of their body weight per day, that is a lot. And what kinds of things, and that was Olivia's question, so good question, Olivia. And what kinds of things they eat would be basically any kind of little plankton, small organisms, free-floating that they can catch. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the beak and mouth in a minute. Now, you're, I can see from our questions that some folks are starting to wonder about some of the other organs we're seeing inside this squid. So we've talked about the gills already. The next question I'm getting is, what is that silver thing? That silver thing, my friends, is our squid's ink sac. Ooh, the color just finally adjusted itself back the way it was supposed to be. So now you guys can get a little bit more realistic idea of what the color of this squid is. Um, so... This is an ink sac. I'm not going to break it open now because if I did, there would be black ink all over the place and my plate would start to look real messy. So I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment. But people always see this and they go, hey, what's, there's a fish in there. Is it, what is it, like eat some little silvery worm thing? What is that? Not a fish. It's actually, it's ink sac. Uh, if we wanted to look for the stomach of this squid, we would have to look farther up. And you see some of these sacs here and all this gooey stuff. This stuff here leads into the digestive tract of our squid. Now, finally, we're going to get into the really gross parts. I'm surprised I haven't gotten this question yet, but I've gotten this question yet, but uh, you're probably wondering, maybe you're wondering, how do you know if the squid that you're dissecting is a male or a female? Well, you look at this part right here. Now, I happen to have a second squid with me right now, and I'm going to open that one up as well and see if we can compare, and if I'm lucky, that second squid will be the other sex from this one. So I'm not going to say which this one, what this one is yet. I'm just going to move him. <laughs> Wait, did I just give it away? Move them off to the side. I didn't give anything away. All right, so I'm going to move our squid off to the side and bring a second squid over. And uh, let's see here. And then I'm going to carefully open up this second squid. Going to do this one a lot faster because we already saw this stuff. Now, uh, this second squid, you'll notice a few things externally, has smaller arms. They're not quite as thick as the ones on this one. And also, if I feel here, I feel something kind of firm. And if I am right, that means that when I open this up, I will see some different reproductive organs inside here than in the one that I just opened. So here we go. Here we make our cut. All right. Aha! Victory! So, do you see a difference? They're both laid out right next to each other here. And you can probably see the difference even more clearly if I take my finger and touch these. So one, you notice these two things here. These long things look like sort of like long white tubes. I'm hiding them with my finger. Those two things. I know it's a little bright, a little hard to see. I bring down the brightness at all. Does that help or does that make it worse? A little, easy, a little better. So these are called nidamental glands. Now, and we'll get to what those are in a second. You'll notice that this one over here does not have that. There's just a bunch of gooey stuff here. There's no firm gland there. Then, also, if we look at the top of this one, you'll just see, again, more of this gooey stuff. Nothing else there to look at. Whereas here, we've got this yellow sack that, if I touch it, feels kind of like jello. Now, if I look really closely, this one looks like it's not fully mature, but I can kind of see the beginning of the beading of the like, little bead shapes in there. Now, you might have guessed this already, but this yellow sac here, that's all it's kind of jello-like in its texture, is an egg sac, because this squid down here on the bottom is a female squid. This one on the top is a male, and that gooey sac you're looking at there is an ink sac. I'm sorry, ink sac? Sperm sac. I don't know why I said ink sac. The wrong words are coming out of my mouth. So, this, this sack right up here is the sperm sack. This is the egg sack. And these long white things here, these are nidamental glands. This is what the female has, basically. To, they produce a sort of sheathing that goes around the, uh, that goes around the egg sack as, as, it's, as it's laid. So, where are we here? Now, it, we want to look for a few other organs before we move on. In order to make this easier, I'm going to lift away the nidamental glands on the female. These things are pretty easy to remove. They're just sort of held in place by some sticky tissue. And then underneath we can see, again, she has an ink sac too, just sort of buried there. Some more stomach contents there as well. And then other things we like to look at during this part of the dissection are for the hearts. 
which are really hard to see. In order to find them, squid actually have three hearts. In order to find them, the easiest way to do way, way to look for them is to go up to the top of the arm and look for a little tube. And this guy, I'm having a hard time spotting it. Oh, there, I think that's it right there, maybe. No, maybe not. So again, the hearts are really hard to find. It might be this over here, here in fact, up to the top of the gills here. Is this one a little more obvious? Let's see here. Not doing my best job looking for the hearts. But the thing, reason why these hearts are kind of hard to find because, you know, if you're looking for a human heart, right, it's a big muzzle with a bunch of different, with four different chambers and all that. And it's this robust looking thing. A squid heart is really just a tube that has just one chamber. Because instead of having one heart that does all, all the different things at once, your heart pumps, you know, brings blood in, sends it to your lungs, sends it back out to your body. These have little different hearts for each task. So one heart supplies one set of gills, another supplies the other, another one supplies, the, another one does the rest of the pumping for the rest of the body. And this means those individual hearts can be much simpler. Um, also, we can find the digestive tract of our squid. And my favorite way to do this is actually to go in through the squid's mouth. So I'm going to start by opening up the area around my squid, <laughs> squid's mouth. Uh, Lauren has a question. Are squids poisonous? I don't know of any poisonous squid. I know of a poisonous octopus. The blue ring octopus is famously deadly. But if there's a poisonous squid, it would be news to me. Is there a poisonous squid? Anybody know? Oh yeah, I get, oh yeah, I'm sorry, that's true, they are venomous. So all cephalopods have a slightly venomous bite, but it's not necessarily like it's going to be fatal. It's just that it might make the bite much less pleasant than it would be if it weren't venomous, I guess, for like... Oh, and I'm, I'm just hearing from my colleague here who was bitten by a market squid once that it pinches, doesn't hurt more than that. Again, remember, just because an animal is venomous doesn't mean that it's going to be deadly. Um, so yes, cephalopods are venomous, and one of them, the blue ring octopus, is deadly. But in terms of like, if you're w with most octopuses and stuff, we don't worry about you know getting getting horribly injured by the venom or anything because it's very mild. All right, so let's return to the mouth. So if you look here, you'll see that I found this black thing in the middle of the mouth. I'm going to try to get that to come out. To do this, I'm going to squeeze here until I feel a little pop, which I just felt. And then I'm going to pull. And what I've tried, what I've done here is take what's called what you can see the beak there in the middle, this little hard thing, and what's called the buccal mask, which just mean mask, which just means the, the cheeks. And I'm pulling it away from the squid's head here. And by the way, if you see these little ridges on the sides, those contain nerve connections and stuff. The squid's brain is actually inside this area that I'm about to pull out. So if we look into this hole that's left behind, the squid's brain will be in there. But because it's all just white matter. It doesn't really show in comparison to the rest of the squid's body. It's not that easy to see. So now as I pull away here, you'll notice there's one tube that's still connected. Does anyone see that? See that tube there? Pretty gross, right? So, so if I yank on this, you'll notice something interesting happening here. You see that? How it's pulling on the inside of the body? Now, it's not doing as good of a job as I would like here, but maybe if I, do, if I bring it in a little bit more. It, this is the esophagus that I'm yanking on here, this, this white tube. Again, you can see it coming out there. See, there it is, white tube that goes into this hole. And when I pull on it, you'll notice that there's tension on the organs inside the squid here. That's because this esophagus attaches, of course, to the squid's stomach. So that's where the digestive tract of the squid starts. There's a couple other organs up in here underneath the, underneath the, uh, the sperm sac and so on, and the ink sac. But there's really not that much going on in there. There's only a few organs. They're very small. They're not that comp there's not that complex looking. There's not a bunch of intestines or anything like that. These animals have a fairly fairly simple internal biology compared to some larger creatures. But nonetheless, they are they are still very complicated animals and have a lot of stuff they uh, they do with their lives. Now there's a couple other things. Now I'm going to just break this off. Oh, so now you, oh, now, uh, now, see, I had to pull it for this. Now you can see how I'm yanking on the stomach there. See how the organs come along when I pull this tube? This is just the, just the, you know, anybody ever seen the alien movies? Yeah, this is like that. Okay, so, it's like, so, anyway, um, so that's how the esophagus attaches to the stomach. I always like to take a moment, by the way. I always forget at the beginning. Uh, remember, um, although we are having a lot of good scientific fun here, these are live animals who, who have given their lives, so to speak, to science. So thank you, squid. <laughs> I'm sorry for what I do to you. 
But uh, nonetheless, remember these these squid were caught for human consumption uh, as part of just, as, and also they're sustainable seafood, I might add. So we're just using them to learn in a different way. Rather than eating them, we're going to be studying how their bodies work. Now, there's one more thing I want to do. I, we're already over time, but since we started a little late, I'll go a couple more minutes. I'm just going to pull this head away from the body. And as I do this, I'm actually going to be taking away all the internal organs too. And watch as I go here. Voila. You can see that as I've pulled that away, there's something left underneath. And people oftentimes will look at this little thing and go like, what is that? Like a piece of plastic or something? Because it looks like that. It looks like it's some kind of little piece of plastic inside the squid's body. And this one's a little broken, so it doesn't look quite right. But this is not a piece of plastic. This is actually a clear structure that naturally grows inside the body of the squid. It's called a pen. And that's because it kind of looks like, like, like a feather pen. And this structure helps to kind of keep the, the squid's body a little bit rigid when it's alive. So there's an anchor point for all the organs and, the, and muscles and so on. And it's one of the only really kind of hard-ish parts of a squid's body. The other hard parts would be inside the little, inside the individual suction cups of a squid. There's actually little tiny teeth rings, which I guess those are hard too. Um, there's the beak, which is a little bit hard. Where'd my beak go? Here over here back in my buccal mask. Mass. And by the way, if you uh, look at the beak of a squid, it looks a lot like, I know it's not a great angle, but it looks a lot like the beak of a lot of birds of prey because it's used for very, very similar purpose, basically to pierce into things and rip off little chunks. The tongue, on the other hand, is very different. And then the only other really hard part of your squid is found inside the squid's eye. And I'm going to cut open this eye here to find that. Here we go. If it squirts, I'll be, you know, well, I'll just, that, that's his life. I'm gonna try not to squeeze as I cut so I don't get goo all over my table. But as you saw me do that, you notice a lot of, a lot of stuff came out. Oh gosh. All right, well. A lot of stuff came out of there. What I was looking for was this. See this little bead that's all covered in goo? That is the lens of this squid's eye. Fascinating little thing there, right? It looks another like a little clear, almost like a little plastic bead. This lens is uh, very similar to the lens that any animal with a single lensed eye would have, an animal such as ourselves. Um, but the cool thing I love about eyes is that different branches of animals have evolved them totally separately from each other. Eyes have independently evolved like 40 times or so that we know of in the history of the Earth. Different animals have, have through what's called convergent evolution, developed very, very similar eyes. So things like a single lens eye have evolved in vertebrates separately from when they evolved in animals like the cephalopods. Um, and then the last thing, of course, of interest in here is that ink sac. So we're gonna make this our last part of our dissection. Watch what happens when I cut this baby open. All right, here we go. <laughs> that, that's a very technical language I'm using here. All right, let's go and see what happens here. So, it doesn't seem like much at first, right? But watch how much dark stuff comes out of here. And once I start smearing it around, it like, it, it becomes, the things get very gooey looking very quickly. Look at all that. All that comes out of one teeny little ink sac. So you can imagine if this squid was shooting, look at that, <laughs> if this squid was shooting this out into the water, it would create a nice little cloud that might serve to confuse or deter a predator. Um, and I can just keep on, like you can really get a huge amount of ink out of it. And I didn't even empty the whole sack. Here. There's still more in there. Like I could make the entire, I could probably paint the entire paint, the entire plate black if I wanted to. Um, so, and the dairy served, voila. Okay, so. It is advertising, is it not? So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing a little bit about this, how, about how the squid's body worked. Uh, thank you for joining me. I would like to thank our two squid once again uh, for, uh, for uh, doing what they've done. It's nice to have them here, and uh, I don't know. Anyway, so thank you, squid. That was very educational for us, and we appreciate it. Um, if anybody has any other questions, uh, remember we're going to be... Uh, answering our emails on this at live at lbaop.org. Again, that's live at lbaop.org. And uh, you can also text us for the next few minutes at 562-286-1838. And we're going to be doing one more show this afternoon at what time? I mean, sorry, at 3 o'clock, but what's the show going to be? Sharks. A show on sharks at 3 o'clock if you want to join us again. And also, I want to let everyone know that tomorrow we're changing our schedule slightly. So instead of having our first show be at 10 a.m., the first show tomorrow is going to be at 9 a.m. 
And we're going to uh, then proceed with the same, with five shows from there. So the last show tomorrow, instead of being at three, will be at two. And you can, again, check this on our website to see the exact posting of the times and so on. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And my name's Luke from the Aquarium of the Pacific. Bye-bye.